Well, here's Adam, of course, making a welcome return to Fright Fest. Um, how this is going to work is we're just going to literally sit there. We're going to comment on the movie. It is audible for you to hear. Hopefully, we'll be audible on top of the soundtrack, so you'll hear everything that we have to say. We're going to have to try and keep talking all the way through the 90 minutes, because as you know, when you see a DVD commentary, it's actually quite boring when there's huge gaps. So we're going to try and plug in as much as we can. At the end of that, um, once the film's finished and the credits have completed, completely stopped, um, we're going to ask for questions from you, unless if there's anything that Adam actually hasn't brought up, which I, you know, I hope he's brought everything up, but in case he hasn't, ask him some stuff. That will be filmed as well with the audience members in camera. And then Adam's got some special signed little uh, uh, postcards for you to, to yeah, sign. Yeah, I brought some uh, uh, headshot things of my autopsy photo that all you guys have asked for on MySpace. Totally free. I'll be signing for you guys afterwards where the... Uh, um, uh, probably upstairs in the lobby, right? Um, so that's basically it. So let's hope it all goes well. Try not to show your boredom too much in case it does get a bit... Boredom? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Um, okay, are you ready, Richard? We can start. Okay. <laughs> Face rape. <laughs> All right. As soon as it starts, we'll start. Okay. Here we go. Aeroscope Pictures. Who are they? <laughs> Aerosco Pictures is my company that I started 10 years ago with uh, my director of photography, Will Barrett, and uh, one of the producers of Hatchet, Corey Neal, is also part of it. Um, yeah, 10 years later, we actually made a real movie. Look at that. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and this is... It's an uh, intentionally slow fade up to evoke the mood. Right, let's start straight away then. I mean, is this a real swamp? No, this is all shot in the desert in California. Um, this is actually a tiny little pool in a place called Sable Ranch in Santa Clarita, California. And the reason why we couldn't shoot in New Orleans is because we couldn't afford it and because the unions were looking for us. As most of you guys know with independent filmmaking, the unions always kind of come and shut you down and sort of uh, twist your arm to pay them more money to keep shooting. And since this movie already had so much buzz before we even started, uh, we said that Hatchet was shooting in New Orleans, and then we called the movie Love Rodeo, and we shot it in the desert, where they shoot porn. <laughs> <laughs> and all the American unions were looking for us in Louisiana, and we were shooting on a porn set in uh, California. So. That's how we got away with it. We shot a few days in Louisiana, but only the actual Bourbon Street stuff that we're about to get to. Right, now this is the opening, and of course we've, we're seeing Robert Englund, um, one of the three icons you've got in the movie. I mean, did you shoot this first? Did you shoot this up front? Or? This was actually the second night of shooting, was this scene right here. The first night was the whole flashback scene when Victor Crowley gets lit on fire and all that stuff, which was, uh, if anybody's ever gonna make their first feature film, don't start with a giant <laughs> fire effect. That was so stupid to, like, to start that way. This would have been a lot easier. Um, Robert England is probably the nicest guy on the planet for anyone who's ever met him. And he showed up on set talking to every PA, just telling stories. And all the PAs were like, dude, Robert England's the nicest guy ever. And then like 20 minutes later, they're like, can you please get Robert England to stop talking? Like, we're, we're trying to work. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, in the first cut of this film, um, one that we never actually showed anybody. Josh Leonard's actually peeing on the alligator's head, um, but we just thought that was stupid. I mean, the actual logistics of filming like this, I mean, where was your, I mean, obviously your camera was there. Were you actually in the water, or, or what were you doing? With it? The camera was in the water, um, and our camera crew was wearing hip waders. That, that pond that they're in is actually only about four feet deep which was very hard for that uh, animatronic alligator because it was designed for 10 feet of water and we showed up and we had four feet of water. Again, the awesomeness of independent filmmaking. Um, another uh, 
really interesting story about this scene is we shot Robert England first because he had to leave. And then all of a sudden, it started raining when we were shooting Josh Leonard's stuff. And I went into total panic mode and hid under a tree with my director of photography. And I said, what are we going to do? It's raining in his shots, but it's not in Robert England's. And what we did is we added a little bit of digital rain, as you can see. And we added the sound of thunder to all of Robert England's stuff. And when you're watching this without me talking, you actually do believe that this is all the same night and that it is actually raining here. And you've mentioned the animatronic crocodile. I mean, I'm surprised you could actually afford something as luxury as, as that. Well, I could tell you if we could have afforded a good one, we would have shown it. <laughs> um, it looked great. It just didn't work. They showed up and the alligator could only do one thing. It could go, ah, like that. I'm like, alligators don't move like that. And they're just like, shut up. It'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, the sequence that's about to happen with Josh Leonard, we actually went through five stuntmen uh, recording this. Um, it took about five different nights between first unit and second unit to completely kill Josh Leonard. Um, the first stuntman quit after the first time Kane Hodder threw him upside down against the tree. Um, what's really funny is the stuntman's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, we're going to throw you upside down against the tree with one arm tied behind your back. And he thought I was kidding. And then we did it, and he went home. <laughs> and you open with this sort of tease, because obviously the, the, the lead girl is looking for her family. When you, when, but you don't really know that at this particular time. Yeah, part of the fun of this opening is, well, that. <laughs> yeah, that guy quit. Um, <laughs> This, this guy quit. <laughs> but he was a trooper. <laughs> so we wanted to open and give everybody what they're sort of expecting in a slasher movie and show you, yes, this is going to be gory. This is going to be real effects. Uh, for the next 20, 30 minutes, it is uh, basically a comedy. Ah, there you go. Now, this was shot during the day in Louisiana. Um, when you do see the DVD of this, you'll see the behind the, the scenes features and stuff, which are unbelievable. Like, you've never seen behind the scenes features as good as what this DVD is going to have. Um, because our, one of our producers did the DVD. So she was shooting from the moment we made the mock trailer to raise the money for this. Like, you see absolutely everything. And that scene when the camera was going above the water, my Steadicam operator had to sit on the side of the boat with his feet in the water. And there's real alligators like charging the boat. But the one thing that Louisiana alligators like more than Steadicam operator's feet is marshmallows. So we would just sit there and throw marshmallows and they would chase the marshmallow instead of him. And he had no idea that was going on. He's like, there's no alligators, are there? I'm like, no, dude, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you did shoot this in New Orleans. You, yeah. you took a very small crew down there, didn't you? And yes, that woman on the end showing her boobs was 72. <laughs> they thought I was kidding when I said I wanted old lady boobs. I wasn't. Um, we only had, we could only afford about 50 extras for this whole thing. So sometimes, if you look closely, you'll see behind the crowd, there's nobody on the street for miles. <laughs> this was all shot at like 5 in the morning. Like right here, aside from who you see, there's nobody there. And these people are the same people that are up on the balcony. There's actually a great shot where, they, where there's a guy up there who throws beads and he catches them <laughs> down below. And okay, the important thing about showing real women lifting their shirts for me is when you go to New Orleans, you've seen those Girls Gone Wild commercials. Those girls are models and they're paid. When you really go down there, they're not there. And you just want to see these hot chicks that you saw in the commercial, and that's not what you get. When we were shooting uh, the mock trailer down there, we were interviewing a guy on the street, just saying, you know, have you ever heard of Victor Crowley? And of course, I made up Victor Crowley, but everybody down there is like, Victor, yeah, I know Victor Crowley. And this old woman jumps in front of our camera and lifts up her shirt, and I swear to God, he's like, Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your mom's hot. <laughs>